Hi everybody, Jo here. Thanks for joining me again. I hope you're enjoying this clockwork carnival as much as we are. Honestly, we've had so much fun with the new products and I must thank Tracy, these fabulous new designs. Honestly, they're absolutely outstanding. So what I thought we'd do today is have a play with something a little bit different. And we thought we'd decorate this MDF heart. So Lavinia actually sell these and I've been dying. I bought a few a while ago and I've been dying to have a play. So these new stamps, look, I can't wait to get in the packet. Oh, do you know what? Let's just rip the side. Um, these new stamps, I think are going to be fabulous for this. And I'm thinking of sort of a, a clockwork type of heart thing. So... My idea is I'm going to use some of the cream card. Now, this is multifarious. So, obviously, we use multifarious a lot. But did you know you can get it in cream? So, I just need to... And this is an, an A4 sheet. And I think you get 10 in the pack. I'm going to file that next to Eric. And what I want to do to start off with is just draw round my heart. Now, I haven't got a finished one to show you because this is just an idea I have in my head. Now, you know what it's like when I welcome you into the space of my head? Enter at your own peril. Right, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is just grab myself a pair of scissors and cut this sort of square. Well, you know, oblong, rectangle, whatever. And we're going to deal with that in a minute. That's the idea anyway. Let me put that up there. And what I want to do is put a base coat on my MDF. And I'm going to use the metallic gilding polish for this. Now, this is fabulous because you don't need to prep your heart. And next to me, I've got on the floor next to Eric. See, I'm leaning over. I've got um, a sheet on my floor and I've got some containers ready to just pop the heart on so it can dry and then it'll be dry ready to use later so metallic gilding polish water-based remember the lid the applicator is in the lid there sponge applicator I need both hands to undo this and there's our fabulous polish now very simply and i'm thinking this lovely is it bronze or oh, copper shine this one is going to be perfect for the project I've got in mind. Now look at that. How smooth does that go on? And me having the applicator in the polish. I've used these polishes before, but I must admit it was always the fact you had to clean the brush, wash the brush after. This is just brilliant. And what we're going to do is just cover one side fully, which is going to be the back, and then just around a little bit on this side, cover the edges. And I always have a little sort of edge there where I pick mine up. And you don't need too much look. It goes such a long way. Right, and that is perfect now, ready to go. So I'm just going to lean on the floor. That has covered brilliantly. So I'm just going to give my hands a quick wipe because we're going to be doing some stamping and I really want clean hands. Truth be told, you know what I'm like, I want clean hands anyway. Now, really important with this polish, it's water-based, but if you've used it for a while, if you don't have a night-night routine, what you'll notice is the polish can dry out, but also the um, applicator can go a bit, and I hate, I can't think of another word, a bit crusty, Sorry, but I can't think of another word. And it just dries out a bit. So you need your night-night routine. And so what you do is with your polish, this is the same with, um, I use the same with grunge paste if it's a water-based one. So I say night-night and that will keep that fabulous. I'm going to use it again later. And then on the applicator, I just spritz once and that'll be enough to keep that nice and moist and pop it back in the lid. Do check it clicks down. I had one where I hadn't quite clicked it down and then it can dry out a little bit. So just check it's properly closed. And then we'll just 
clean this up a bit but what I found is when I'm doing sort of these MDF projects if I put my gilding polish on first like now then it actually dries out by the time I've finished doing my stamping and playing on that piece of card hopefully it'll be ready for me to um to attach my card to it well that's my plan anyway See, I'm not clever enough to be one of these clever people that fast forwards things. Unfortunately, you know, with me, it has to be what it is. I'm such a dinosaur with all this IT stuff. Poor Sam, bless him. He's so good with it all. And Chris, and I'm just such a, an old fogey. Right, so my idea with this is um, we're going to use a few techniques that, um, I've got to be honest, I've used these for years and now we've got these fabulous stamps, they really lend themselves to this. And I want to make this heart look like we've got a piece of background card and put it on the heart. So I'm going to use this lovely new colour, Lost Shadow, and we're going to do that thing of DTP and all that is direct to paper again an old technique you'll have seen loads of people using it not my technique it's been around for years but i love it for quick backgrounds and depending on the colors you use depending what sort of effect you get it's just brilliant you can alter it and mess about with it so much the most important thing is to hold your ink pad at 45 degrees and it does work well with the square ink pads so we're going to go direct to paper and we're just going to swipe down now with this gray color you won't get a lot but i'm getting enough i'm just going to turn it round and go back it's just a base that i want a base covering and for me that's lovely just to bring those gray tones in now those of you that have done workshops with me before we've done this when we've created almost that weather washed beach look wood effect and again you can do that so that's the type of thing we're just going to work on now what we're going to do to bring in, I want it to sort of vintage it up. So, hence vintage photo. And I think it works so well on the cream card. We'll bring a little bit of vintage photo over the top. And we'll just stop at one way. And again, for me, although the vintage photo, it's gone on top of that grey, I still think it's important, look, to see that grey underneath. I just adore this. I just think it's the most fabulous thing to do. Now, the next thing to just add another dimension is to bring in some brush oil powders. And this is light brown. And again, remember, pin off the lid. Oh, and look, I've got some lovely labels on mine. So thank you to Sarah, our lovely Sarah Anderson. She gave me these as a present and I had great time, Sarah, sticking them on my brush oil. So thank you. So I'm just going to put, I don't want to overdo it. We're not doing a pizza with our toppings. We're just going to maybe go for three. We'll start off with three can always add a bit more can't we now I need a piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to add some water but I don't want to overcook it wow look at that so it's nice to just blot it before it goes too far because I want to keep some of these areas and what you'll find is it's almost going to look like it's a knot you know where you get those areas in the wood now I like that but I could do the bit dark here, but what I'm thinking is instead, I'm going to come in with a, a bit of ink now. So this is Ground Espresso. Do you know, and this is just such a lovely thing to do. You will just play. And the reason I haven't cut the heart out, because I, I for me, find it easier creating on a larger piece of card and then I'll cut it down. I'm just going to dip my finger in and I almost want to create just some darker areas around this is just my way of adding a little bit of DNA <laughs> now I do think I do just want a little bit darker down here so I am going to add a bit more and really this is just playing ladies and gents you will just have so much fun now if you're somebody who thinks I don't do MDF I'm not interested Joe. I would say to you fair enough do you know what but you could actually do this on a card. So, you know, don't ever dismiss anything. You know, if you're not into your MDF or say you're journaling, most of the things we do, you can do on a, on a card. So this, you could, you could do it on a square piece of card. You know, it doesn't have to be a heart. I'm doing a heart, but all the techniques, 
You could do on tags, bookmarks, cards. So I'm just going to bring in, if you just bear with me, just going to bring my heat gun in. Just to take, dry it off a little bit before we add some stamping. And then always dry from the back. And when you're making something like this, don't be hard on yourself. At the minute, we're just looking at a background. And as we do each stage, it will all come together. So I'm going to bring in my copy paper just because now we're going to add some stamping. And... I love, this is the most fabulous background stamp here, look. It's almost like a honeycomb, I love this one. And I'm going to come in with Versafine Claire. So my idea is, for my background, I've got Morning Mist, because I'm thinking that'll tie the grey tones in. I've got pine cone to bring in my brown tones. I want this mainly to be sort of browns and greys. But I'm actually going to add a little bit of orange and that's going to come in with the summertime. Just to bring in sort of that, you know, often in, in sort of wood and, and antique things, you get sort of a brown, sort of orange, sort of colour. And, and this will just be in the background, so it's not going to be sort of in your face. Now, I just need a, a stamping block, which I did put somewhere. Honestly, I've got all these things all over my desk and my area is just shrinking and shrinking. If only the same thing happened to me, eh? So I'm just going to ink up this background and we're going to stamp it randomly. We'll have one over here. And I like the edges because we haven't got straight edges. Quite often I would do it organically. I would actually take it off the acrylic block. But because the edges look... This lovely shape, I've almost got that for me there, look. So I can just, and if you look as well, we use the brown brush out, but look, it's got orange in it. So I think this orange will just tie in beautifully. And again, I'm not going to overcook it, but I think... A little bit at the top, just a tiny bit. Just at the top here, peeping in. Right, I like that. So I'm still working in my head. I'm, I'm working on the background. I'm going to bring some lovely cogs in for my main design. But what I'm thinking is a couple of background stamps. And I love this. This is the um, steampunk um, verse, is it? Do you know, I, I've said this before, the hardest bit for me is learning the names. But in the description box, they'll all be in the description box. I just want to play. But I love this. It's got lovely steampunk words and some cogs. And I'm going to use the grey for this. Now, I'm thinking, let's just check out first. Oh, first generation's too strong. So let's definitely come in with second. Yeah, I like that. Might add a hint of first, but at the minute I think we'll go with, with second. And then do you know what? Let's, because we can, let's just add a hint of first. Oh yeah, I like that. What do you think? I think we need a little bit more. So I'm just going to... Go for a bit up here and then to go in that rule of three, let's add a little bit in this corner. Yeah. So that's all starting just to look so fabulous. Just building up that background. I'm just going to wipe my stamp. And as I say, for me, as a background, that just, I love the way we're building those layers up. And to think, 10 minutes ago, it was just that piece of card. So now I want to add some cogs and, oh my goodness, 
I've got on my desk here the cogs all laid out and there are just so many fabulous ones. But again, I want in my head to think of depth. So if I add some in the morning mist in the grey, that will push them to the back, won't it? So, and remember, it's nice to overstamp designs. Don't think all the time that your designs have to be separate and, and not touching. It's nice to have sort of designs that, that do move and it will follow your, your eye around the whole design. I like this one as well. Mind you say that and then I go, I like this one, I like this one. So I'm just going to literally play with different cogs, different colours ink and just build up a design. I don't want to over fuss it. What you find is because when you think of the way that the cogs worked, they all touched each other. So I'm actually going to follow the design across here. I'm not going to do cover the whole thing in cogs because just in my head, I think that will be too much of sort of a, dare I say, a pizza. And I almost want to make the cogs look as they they are as though they are cogs and they do work. So I'm going to come in with the brown now. And in my head, I'm thinking when this cog turns, it'll turn that one, that one, that one. And I know you're going to say to me, Joe, you're overthinking this. But in all honesty, that is the way my head works. And I know I probably overthink things. But then, to be honest, I know I over talk as well. So I do apologise. Just going to bring in a little cog now, just to have that one there. And then we'll just have a couple of random little cogs. But there are so many. And what you'll find is you get your favourites. I love this one. It's quite a, a solid one look. But I just think it gives a bit more depth. And you see how that area. So let's just infill with a couple of the solid ones up here. See, I really love the way that's looking. I think we could actually. A couple more. You can tell I love that one, can't you? Right, stop. Walk away from that cog. Right, I need a different one. I actually think we need a grey one in here. Ooh. It's remembering which ink pads which. But yeah, I think we just need a few more grey. Right. Then let me see. Oh, I like this one as well. We put the grey lid on. And honestly, when you get these, you'll be like me. You'll be now. Is that one going to fit in there? Look, do you think that will just fill that gap? Beautiful. So how we're we looking? Just need this bit filling out a bit more down here. One up there. Yeah, I like that. I'm happy with that. I don't want to don't want to overcook it because like I say we're talking about a background. So what I'm just going to do I'm going to get my fan brush and I'm just going to add a few flicks of water. Just because we've stamped in permanent ink there that won't move. But underneath the oxides will so we're just going to give that a couple of minutes put that down there and just give that just to give us a bit more sort of attitude in the background we'll give that a quick whiz So I do hope you're enjoying these new stamps and I hope you're enjoying all the samples that we've put on social media and all the ideas. We've had got so many fabulous tutorials. Honestly, 
the design team, the work that they produce. And it's nice because we all have different styles and we can show you that no matter how you want to use these stamps, you're going to really enjoy them. Now, what I'm going to do is very quickly cut this out. And I say very quickly. So talk amongst yourselves. In fact, maybe just have that. Have you got a drink? Have you got yourself a nice brew? Have you got a snack? Cheeky biscuit. And what's your biscuit of choice? I should have really Googled what the steampunk snack of choice would be. I think it's going to be something like a Gary Ball, did you think? Or a chocolate bourbon or... Right, look at that. And the reason I wanted to cut that out is we're going to do a little bit more stamping. And before that, I just want to add some ink around the edge and I just want to blend it. And to me, it'll really show you. So I'm going to come in with my little smoothie and I'm just going to bring in and it'll just frame the whole design. And for me, it makes such a difference. So look at that. When you compare the two sides, bringing this brown really frames and almost makes it look so rich. A bit more down there. Yeah. So what we can do is, look, we've got some ink there. So remember the other week when we did about smooshing, we can just use that and just smoosh a little bit of that onto here. And that will add another layer and another bit. Oh, look at that. See, when that's dry. So playing with something like this means you can use all these techniques that we've learnt and it's an ideal way to use them. So once again, just going to bring in my heat tool. Now, as I say at home, this would be better if it was left to dry naturally. So you could go off and make yourself a drink or have some lunch. But just for the purposes of this, we'll use our heat tool. But I have to say, look, so that's just added. If I give you a close-up, look at this. It's added another layer. So I've still got my writing there, look. We've got that lovely background stamp there. We've got the brush show here. And it's all just leading into that lovely... Look at this bit here, I love this. So it looks like an old piece of card. Now, I'm sorry to just slowly show it to you but I just think it's fabulous the way we've created and for me that just looks like as I say an old piece of vintage steampunk ephemera so I'm, I'm dead chuffed with that I'm really happy so I just want to stamp my main image just what I'm thinking and it's this fabulous oh just let me lost my inky binky on the floor and I'm thinking I want my main image there. Now I'm also going to stamp this and cut it out. I'm going to use the brown again. And I just want it at an angle. And I'm going to put it there. And then on a spare piece of card... Now I have stamped it and cut it out, but I, I don't want to do... To you know, too much of what I've done earlier. So just to show you how beautiful it stamps, we'll stamp it out. Now I would stamp it out twice extra and put that to one side. And then what I want is the fabulous wings. Now we've got two sets of wings. We've got large and small. Um, there we go so I'm just going to stamp these we've had so much fun but I must warn you the cogs the, the little tinkers they have minds of their own and, and they're a bit like Pippin they like to hide now I just want three wings here one two three 
So do be warned with the cogs. You need to have a, a good word with them because, as I say, they do like to hide. And we're going to put three the other side. Now, I'm going to decoupage this, so don't worry. I just want the outside. Because what I've done, I've already stamped this again, look, and coloured it in, and I'm going to decoupage that. And all I've done to colour it in is I've smooshed some of the ink off my mat like we've just done and I've also added a little bit of highlight painting with my metallic gilding polish and again that's so easy to do and if I show you literally take your paintbrush again water-based we've added water haven't we and you can just so if I add some onto the wings here look to get that metal and just around the edge and we're going to decoupage on top of this, but just to show you. But if you want to highlight any of these cogs, look, it's just a fabulous way of adding that bit. And also you can splatter with it. But look at that. That shimmer is just... Well, I, I just love it, me. Right, that goes in the water. So when it comes to putting our design together, so we're going to fast forward because I know you want to see how to attach this. This one's this is dry look. So we're going to use our bitterty foppity glue, which you know I can't say. Now, what a little tip with this, I would always Pop the glue on the card like this look, but give it a good rub because it's a little bit like, I don't know if you've ever done wallpaper in, you know where you're left with those bits that don't glue down. If you don't give it a good rub, I've found that for me, that's what happens. And then I would put some all the way around the edge look and literally with your finger, just make sure that that glue is right up to that edge. Because otherwise the edge might not glue down if you miss a bit. So it is important just to use your finger. Just make sure that glue goes all the way. And especially at the bottom bit here, look. So next bit is wipe your fingers again. Now you can do this either way, you can take the card to the MDF or the MDF to the card and it's whichever way you think is best. You, your glue will give you a bit of wiggle time and it's just a matter of wiggling it. We need a bit of wiggle don't we? There we go. And my suggestion would be use a piece of kitchen towel to press your work down just in case you've got glue on your fingers. Right, press that down all the way. Now, if you've got a little bit of card showing through underneath, my suggestion is I just trim. If you can trim with your scissors, if not, what you need is one of these fabulous emery boards for your nails. Oh, and yes, by the way, the lovely lady who asked if my nails were false nails, thank you for the compliment, but no, they're just mine. And to be fair, I literally just put polish on myself. I think I've only ever had my nails done once. I'm not that lucky. So literally, they are just mine. Anyway, the nail file that I use for my nails, just go round and just literally do this. And any bits that are over, you'll get a lovely, lovely finish. Make sure you do it this way, going down. If you do it this way, you may flick. And in fact, I'm just going to cut that little bit because I can. And then go around with the emery, look. Now, this will give you a white tooth to the card. 
It might be you want to leave that, but I'm going to add some gilding polish on. So you won't even, you won't see that, so don't worry. But it's a lovely way of when you then, when we put the polish on and anybody looks, they will have no idea that you've glued a piece of card on there. So make sure it's glued down well. And emery board, well, yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to add my gilding polish right at the end. Make sure that's lovely and smooth. So a couple little finishing tricks. We have a hole here if you want to hang the heart. So again, you can just put your scissors through. Let's feel where that is. There we go. So I'll do that so I can hang if I want. And again, if you press downwards, you get a, a nice result. So what I've got is I've got my clock face look. Now, I've also got a smaller clock face that I've put glossy accents on. And I'm going to decoupage that. So for those of you that don't know about glossy accents, this is glossy accents. And it goes on clear. And I cut mine out added some colour and then put the glossy accents and let it dry. You can leave it to the end if you want, but me, I just wanted to check it was all lovely and dry before I added it. And also I've got some of the smaller wings that I've cut out ready. And I'm just going to pop my wings under there. And that way it gives me a little bit of sort of decoupaging. And I love, this is just such a fabulous way of introducing layers. These, these stamps just, oh, they cry out for this. For me, I love my clean and simple, but also I love being able to do something like this. So I'm going to pop that on and then just put that one. Under, so I've stamped the larger of the wings underneath and I'm just putting one of the smaller one on top, look. Now you could add some thread under here. We've got some lovely, in fact, I'm going to get some, just bear with me a minute. We've got some lovely gold threads on the website. So I'm thinking... We could add some of this. I told you my desk was just covered in bits, didn't I? So what we'll do, we'll just pop some glue in the middle. And then we'll scrunch up our thread. Add that there. And then bit more glue on there. I must say I could play doing things like this all day. And pop that on top. Now again you can decide exactly where you want your thread. I want that end under there so let's pop that under there. And this one, I want that one just under. So again, you can just spend your time getting it exactly how, how you want it. And I love that. I just think, yeah. So I've got a couple of our lovely sentiments. Every second counts and time flies. And what I'm thinking is, I just want a little bit of brown ink just around them. So I'm just thinking, I think that'll just set it off. I've put some of the grey director paper across them that I think, yeah. Now, I think we'll have every second counts at the bottom. Again, a little bit of our 
glue and if I put that under there like that and then let's have time flies at the top this is just such a fun thing to do and I'm sure you can incorporate I mean you could make two or three of these you know and they'd all be different depending which stamps you choose. I mean, I've only used a small fraction of the stamps that we've got on here. I was absolutely spoilt for choice as to which ones to use. Now, just for some finishing little touches, I have a tin. And what I have, this was given to me by my lovely friend Sharon, and it's my rusty tin and I have things in here, I rust things. Carl does think I'm funny because I collect just any little bits, safety pins, little things from the garage, nails. And I love to just put them in water and salt and rust them. And I'm thinking I could add all that there. And could I add a little safety pin up there? And I've got a little, oh, look at that. Yeah. Right, I like those. And again, it's just adding those little bits at the end. But before I glue those on, I just need to come in with my lovely gilding wax again, my gilding polish, just to go around the edge. So if you've got any bits where it wasn't quite level, your card wasn't quite to the edge, for me, if I just come with my gilding, this beautiful gilding polish, this will tie it all together, but also it just helps to almost fuzzy that edge between the card. I hope that makes sense. I hope you can see that. Now, again, I need a bit more of my night-night routine. And I know we've just done it, but for me, I need to do it again. And then I know that'll be spot on for next time. Click that down. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. So, glossy accents. Now, this is when I'm using my metal embellishments. Now, where were we going to put that there? I use my glossy accents to glue them. It can be a glue for metal. But I also need an umbunga. Now, mine's an old one. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those crafters. I don't like throwing things away unless I have to. So I have got glossy accents in here, look. But it does need unbunging every time I use it. Now, this is lovely because this is going to... It will glue it in place, but also it'll just give me another dimension. Especially with the clock there. And I'm going to put some in this beautiful rusty nib and we're going to add that almost as though it's a clock hand and then put our rusty safety pin here oh do you know what i am gonna to have to buy another bottle aren't I? I think i might just have enough to go inside and it dry lovely and clear and just dry my Rusty safety pin there. Carl thinks I'm mad when he sees my little dish and when he's cleaning his garage and his shed out. If I find any rusty nails, I am that person that has to keep them. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm going to bring it a bit closer if I can and just show you. And I hope you just take, even if you don't want to do one of our lovely MDF hearts, we've got MDF coasters. You could actually do any of this design on a card. And you know what? It's great for men's cards. But I'm thinking New Year. I always struggle with New Year. I don't know about you, but I struggle with ideas for New Year. You could use the time flies. I mean, birthdays, retirement. Oh, do you know what? Seriously, there are so many, so many things we could use this design and these lovely new stamps for. And I've hardly touched on it. I've used maybe about a third of the stamps we've got. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of our fabulous extravaganza. And as always, thanks for all your lovely comments.
so so pleased to be here honestly i just adore what i do i'm so lucky right i've kept you long enough sorry i know i talk too much love and hugs from me you take care everybody and just have fun bye for now <laughs>